Come Holy Spirit, we implore you, be with us always, so that in all things we may act under the influence of your inspiration. Come Holy Spirit, help us, enlighten us, guide us, strengthen us, console us, heal us, restore us, and tell us what we should do, and give us your marching orders. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the first day of our 12 days Holy Spirit call. In total, today is the 26th day of this conference. And as we have begun our 12 days call on the Holy Spirit and complete surrender and dedication to Him, I would like to encourage you to do well to draw up your own prayer intentions and pray as you feel led. Also make sure to breathe short prayers to the Holy Spirit throughout the day. You can pray and breathe short prayers like Come Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, illuminate me. So let's continue from where we left off yesterday. For every word of God that Abraham received, he built an altar. For Abraham understood and he knew that the God who had promised him what has been promised is a spirit being. And in order for God to come true, because of the royal decree that God himself made in Psalm 115 verse 16, that the earth is for man, he, Abraham, must create an altar that will serve as an entry point. He must create an altar that will serve as a spiritual embassy to allow the spirit of God to come fulfill what God promised. The only way you can remember what God told you or promised you is when you build an altar to the word that you received. If you didn't build an altar, forget it. You know, I'm a teacher by birth. By ordination, I'm a teacher. And by training, I'm a teacher. Because I attended a teacher training college. So by training, I'm a teacher. And there is a very crucial principle in education namely when you teach someone he will forget if you make him practice he will remember however if you make him teach someone else he will know so as an educationist in the kingdom of god if you do the work of god or practice it you remember it if you don't do it you will forget those words that god spoke to you because you refuse to build an altar around the words he spoke to you. And if you find out that you are sleeping in this season, the devil has worked on your case over time. Now that's a parable. Think about it. So, Abraham built an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. Do you know what he was, he was doing when he was building an altar? He wanted to trap that reality down and make it possible for God to make sure that what he has told him that he will do, he will do. These men that I speak about, Noah, Abraham, our patriarchs, these men had no Bible like we do today. All the infrastructure that we have today, they don't have. They lived by tents and altars. They pitched tents and they built altars. So he built an altar to the God that appeared unto him. If you know what I'm teaching, eh? Ah, if you know what I'm teaching, and the word of God comes to you, and you receive it with glad tidings, that is when you build an altar. If the word of the Lord comes to you, that you receive a breakthrough, that is when you take a fast. When the word of God comes to you, that you receive healing, that is when you begin to worship. 
Because God spoke or spoke through his servant. And you don't know what I'm talking about. And you are not discipled properly. You don't get the answered prayers. And that's the story of most of us. Many things that God wants to do in your life may not come to pass in your lifetime if you don't know this principle I'm talking about. He built an altar unto the Lord. And as he was building the altar, what he was saying was that, Oh Lord, you have the right of way into my space. It is only your hand I want to see in my arena. Abraham understood priesthood, so he built his altars. So that his life would be a product of his intercourse with his God that appeared to him and gave him a personal promise. So, so now that the issues are clear, let's move on to discuss altars proper. Let's go a little deeper. You know, I, I, I started a journey from somewhere, your dominion as a human. I talk about your position in God. Okay? Now we are going a little deeper. Now this aspect of the conference, we are going to be looking at the spiritual laws that are associated with practicing priesthood, practicing prayer, and setting up altars so that you can create earthly permission for heavenly interference. So that's what we're going to be looking at now. The spiritual laws that are associated with practicing priesthood, the spiritual laws that are associated with prayer, the spiritual laws that are associated with setting up altars, the spiritual laws that are associated with creating earthly permission for heavenly interference. So this discussion is about the spiritual techniques, the biblical techniques that must be put in place in order for God to invade our spaces so that he can become the controlling principle that governs the outcomes of our lives. The first law of the altar. Let's go to Psalm 50 verse 5. The first law of the altar. And I read, Gather to me these consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather unto me these consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather unto me. The reason why these guys were being summoned was because the most critical agents of the kingdom of God are those ones that create passage for God. The most critical agents of the kingdom of God are those that create passage for God. So when deep kingdom matters or critical kingdom issues are at stake, the people God visits or summons are practicing servants of God in the area of the business of the altar. Because the idea of the altar is the idea of perpetual sacrifices that are made in order to secure and justify God's interventions. So you should know that the language that spirits understand is the language of sacrifice. The language that spirits understand is the language of sacrifice. Just like the language of spirits is the language of prophetic impression. So the language that spirit speaks, the language that a spirit speaks, uh, when a spirit wants to speak to you, hello, are you with me? When a spirit wants to speak to you, the spirit will use prophetic impression. The spirit will use vision. The spirit will use dreams. The spirit will use revelation. The spirit will use perceptions. The spirit will use impulses. The spirit can even arrest the vocal cord of someone else and use it to speak to you. When spirits want to speak, they speak the languages of prophetic impression, the language of vision, the language of dreams, the language of revelation. Now, the, when you want to speak back to a spirit, the language that they understand is the language of sacrifice. Are you with me? So when a spirit wants to speak to you, when it wants to communicate to you, it will use prophetic impression, it may use vision, it may use dreams, it may use revelations, it may use perceptions, it may use impulses, it may, it may arrest somebody around you vocal cord and use it to speak to you. But 
if you want to speak to a spirit, the, the, the one of the fundamental languages that a spirit understands is the language of sacrifice. So in the demonic or the divine realm, if you want to get the attention of a spirit, just begin to sacrifice. Are you getting it now? That is why those of you who have attempted going to the other side or who have heard stories of people going to the other side, when you go there, if you want the attention of the spirit, you must sacrifice something. They will demand for something. It is that thing that you sacrifice that will make the spirit come. So if you want the attention of the spirit, you, you, it's, it's a spiritual principle. The language that spirits understand is the language of sacrifice. So if, if you want to get the attention of a spirit, just begin to sacrifice to the spirit. And even if you claim you are ignorant, and one day you wake up and you take a stone and you put outside, and you begin to sacrifice, sacrifice, pour some blood on the stone, say certain things, give it time, a spirit will start appearing to you. You know, when I was still a civil servant in the public service back, back in the day, a friend told me a story about how some boys went for hunting, they killed a rat, and then they poured the blood on the stone, and jokingly, they said, make us catch a bigger game. They were saying all of this because they saw someone do it in some movie that they watched. Unknown to them, even though they were joking, a spirit came. The spirit came to receive the sacrifice of the blood of the rat. They went. They had good hunting expedition. They didn't know that they were back by a spirit. Meanwhile, in their mind, they just, it was just a joke. But whatever they did, it took hold. Now, the next time that they came hunting, they refused to do the ritual. Because, I mean, the first time was a joke. So, I mean, they all became sick. Terrible sickness. It was later discovered that these young men had built their own altar on their own god using the, the blood of rats and they secured a deity to attend to them. Remember, they did all of this ignorantly. But look at the effects. Now, you and I have an opportunity to maximize these matters. We have an opportunity to maximize these matters more than witches and wizards, more than necromancers and other agents of darkness. We have an opportunity to maximize these issues. But you see, there is a shortfall in the understanding of the operation of altars and how they operate in the body of Christ. And that's the reason why we have not been able to individually and corporately maximize our capacities. So, the first law of the altar is that every altar must have an avowed human attendant. Every altar must have a human attendant. So, if you check Psalm 52 verse 2, Psalm 50 verse 2, sorry, that is why it said that they made a covenant with God by sacrifice. Where does the sacrifice take place? The sacrifice takes place on the altar. So there must be an avowed human attendant. I know. I know you go for prayer meetings. I know you do night vigils. I know you go to church. I know you believe you go to all of those corporate programs, group programs that are organized by your local church. Those are very powerful avenues. Those are kick-starting moments to introduce you to the culture of your own priesthood and to equip you with what it takes to manage your own personal altar. But you don't leave it at the corporate level. You need to legislate at your personal level. So moving forward, every altar must have an avowed human attendant. The meaning of that is that my spiritual life, my time with God is not given to chance. Your spiritual life, your time with God is not given to chance. You know, it is quite possible for a believer to have a robust prayer life doing conferences like this because of the arsenals of grace available and things are quite easy in this environment. But when you leave your corporate church environment, in order to kickstart your own time with God, you realize that you are now facing difficulties. That is why you need a commitment to God that whether you are tired, whether you are in prison, whether you are in sin, whether you are happy, whether you are sad, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are tired, whether you are satisfied, you will be determined to attend to this altar consistently every day because the altar business is serious business. And I need to tell you something, that the language of altars is the language of sacrifice. 
So you need something that you can be sacrificing consistently on a daily basis. And there is no situation, rain or shine, hunger or thirst that would stand your way as far as manning and tending your altar is concerned. So if after listening to me now, the Holy Spirit stirs you up and you decide that, okay, I'm going to stand up at 4 a.m. every day of my life for the next 90 days, for one hour every day. Or the Spirit of the Lord stirs you up and you say, okay, I'm going to stand up at 9 p.m. every day, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. every day. It's for God. I'll do 30 minutes worship. I'll do 30 minutes prayers. I'll do 15 minutes reading of the Bible. I'll do 15 minutes prayers. If you have listened to me and the Holy Spirit has charged you and you say, okay, I'm going to stand before God the next 100 days from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. every morning. And you keep to it. Whether you are happy, whether you are sad, whether you feel like going there or not, you stick to it. Meanwhile, you should know that left for you alone, you don't have the grace to do this because your flesh will kick back against it. But if you report it to God, that God, this is what I want to do. I want to stand before you 4 a.m. every day of my life for the next two years. If you report it to God, God will begin to supply you the grace. At first, it's going to be very difficult. Very, very difficult. Very, very... You, you will begin to enjoy sleep like nobody's business. Things will start crossing you. You will become tired. At first, it's going to be very difficult. But you have to do it mechanically. You have to do it mechanically. You have to be there. You have to show up subsequently till the grace comes. And when the grace comes, it will become a delight for you. Even when you are asleep, you will be awoken by the angel timekeeper that comes to attend to you. You don't need an alarm clock. You wake up exactly on the time. Then you see that you are already coming into partnership with God. And because of your commitment, and when you start this, your altar, and begin to offer that sacrifice, I know, I know. I know it's hard to wake up and pray. But the idea of the altar is sacrifice. Remember, it's sacrifice. When you begin to do that, it will take time before you synchronize with the angelic forces. And the time it will take for you will be different from the time it will take for me. When I started this journey, it took me about 397 days to align with the angelic forces. And after you synchronize, then the second law of the altar will kick in. But you must be present at your altar. If you do not stay before that your altar long enough for you to achieve alignment and you get frustrated and you leave, what you just did is to press factory reset. And any day you become serious and you want to try again, you start from the beginning and your alignment date on this second attempt will be shifted further past the first. Remember that scripture said it is the saints that have made a covenant with him by sacrifices that should gather. So if you make sacrifice of fools, heaven will not take you seriously. They will extend your alignment date. And like I told you, it took me about... 397 days and that was the first time i had an angelic encounter and now the output of my life changed because of that alignment and one of the proofs that you have arrived at your alignment is either that you have encounters that you cannot forget or you receive clear instructions and direction from god so you need to begin to work at the altar and it's a spiritual thing it's more spiritual than physical it's about keeping time whether you are in bed whether it's about keeping time keeping time keeping time as far as your interaction with god and your communion with god is concerned let us pray john chapter 14 verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So, today, I would like you to pray your own personal intentions throughout the day. Pray your own personal intentions. We ask that the Holy Spirit himself would come and renew your life, renew the life of our families, renew my life, renew the life of our country, and bring all the graces and blessings that we need. 
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, revealer of all knowledge. Grant us a spirit of revelation. Fill the hearts of your children and rekindle in us the fire of your love. Burn all impurities. Drive away from us every evil and bring healing and restoration to us. Grant us a spirit of discernment and a spirit of wisdom. Give to us all the levels of graces and blessings that we need. O oh Lord, send forth your spirit and bring renewal to our lives. O oh Lord, send forth your spirit and bring renewal to our destinies. O oh Lord, send forth your spirit and bring renewal to everything that we care about. We make all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, have a prayerful day. Shalom and God bless you.